All right, welcome to another Zoom call. It is the end of uh, end of August, and we're at our, I think, our six-year reunion of doing the Zoom calls, maybe seven years. I can't even remember anymore. It's been at least six years. I know we started in August, six or seven years ago doing these. So a lot of Zoom calls recorded that you can listen to if you have no life. <clears throat> so we don't watch time. So go live your life. Don't be listening to all these Zoom calls. All right, so let's get started. Remember, if you have questions in between Zoom calls, go to our website and look at our blog and make sure everybody that's on the Zoom call has definitely been on the membership site now. So we don't need, I can take that announcement out from now on. Um, and let's get going. Okay. Questions sent in. Number one, is it safe to check the Rife machine and laptop in its case as luggage at the airport, or does it need to be uh, on, uh, taken as a carry-on? No, I think it's safe. I mean, I have checked. I have never put it in its case. Um, uh, so when I traveled with it, I've only brought the rife and the laptop and the ball, but I wrapped it in the sweatshirt and put it in my carry-on or put it in my checked luggage. So I never brought the case. I'm sure it's just fine to me. My thought is that that little case, if I check it, that's something that could be easily get lost, I guess. I don't know. But I know people have checked the case. I know people have, uh, I've certainly checked the rife put wrapped in stuff in my suitcase and I've certainly brought it as a carry-on I've done both so um it's uh it's perfectly safe I would think it's probably safer in the case because you know you got you know those cases are you know all the foam you could I think you could throw it out of the airplane and it would still be uh protected those are pretty strong cases so um I think you're fine traveling with it. I don't think anybody's had troubles with that. I have a relative whose pediatrician is saying no one can be around her soon to be born baby unless they have a whooping cough vaccine. That's very interesting. The last time I had a, a DTAP shot was 2010, although I had a tetanus in 2019. Now I have stage four ovarian cancer. I don't know that I should be getting any vaccines, even though I haven't done any chemo at this point. What is your opinion? Um, well, um, I can't give you my opinion on medications from a legal standpoint, but personally, I'm not getting any vaccines. I know a lot of people maybe on this call have gotten the COVID vaccine. And I'm not here to judge anybody, but I think you need to do some investigation on vaccines. Um, I think anybody that's getting any vaccines or vaccinating their children at this point in time, with all the information that's out there on the dangers of these uh, micro doses of aluminum and mercury, um, are not reading the literature. Um, uh, that's all. I can say I, there's just no way I would go to jail before I would get a vaccine at this point. So that's just my opinion. You can throw it in the garbage can if you want, um, but uh, we'll move on. Today, I went to my family doctor. The concern is for my weight loss. I am down to 157 pounds. I was 230 before the cancer was diagnosed and lost about 20 pounds since I went to the doctor in May. Okay, that's very concerning. So May, if you went mid-May, mid-June, mid-July, mid-August, so three months losing 20 pounds, that's not technically cachexia at this point. Cachexia is losing two to four pounds a week, no matter what you're eating. You're not quite at that. Um, but the question is, can any of the supplements be taken away? Or can there be any adjustments so I am not so full feeling throughout the day? Um, do they have to be taken every day? So remember, we've talked about this multiple times about pulsing your supplements. There's nothing wrong with doing some pulsing. 
especially if you're having some issues like this where you know you're you know you're having to drink so much water to swallow supplements because you're not good at swallowing supplements um can you pulse them if you're not good at swallowing supplements and you have to put two pills in your mouth and you have to drink half a glass of water to stop swallow them you have to think about doing something different like opening up the capsules and putting it in a uh, you know a very small six ounce smoothie you know it'd be good to maybe put some protein powder in a smoothie so you can and some other like complex carbs in the smoothie so it's actually a high calorie drink or a higher calorie drink um, and then you're getting your nutrition in that or opening up the capsules and sprinkling it on your oatmeal in the morning or something like that you got to think of things like that so that yes oh i drank so much water taking my supplements i can't even eat um can't even eat my food you got to think of adding opening up the capsules and adding it to your food something like that if you're having trouble putting on weight you have to add some complex carbs back to your diet remember i said last week there's some studies that have come out on regular potatoes we've always said no white potatoes which mean red potatoes purple potatoes um, anything that is a true potato is falls into that category because they have such a high glycemic index but now they're coming out with some studies if you bake them twice you drop the glycemic index but you still have the benefit of the complex carbohydrate for weight gain so you bake six potatoes on Sunday and then on Monday you you put them in the fridge after you're done baking them for an hour and 20 minutes or whatever you're doing and then on Monday you take out a potato from the fridge and you bake it again for 20 minutes to get it nice and hot inside and you eat a nice steamed baked potato with um, some fat on it like an oil like an olive oil on it or a coconut oil on it or some or some butter on it if you're not on a dairy-free diet and you could put some other some vegetables on it some broccoli or something like that it could be a really nice meal that could give you some complex carbohydrates that could help you gain some weight so when you're trying to gain weight you have to add complex carbohydrates back to your diet like oatmeal like rice like twice baked potatoes like i just said things like that can i do a castor oil pack while i'm in my infrared sauna just trying to kill two birds with one stone trying to save some time uh, for sure i don't see any problem with doing a castor oil pack while in your infrared sauna if you can figure out the logistics of that I don't see any issue with that. My son just started a protocol a couple of weeks ago and he has been so thirsty. Is this a part of the detoxification? Well, maybe, um, possibly. So if he has changed his diet drastically, then definitely um, blood sugar issues could cause uh, an increase in thirst. So there's other factors that can be a part of this. Uh, we don't want to just blame it on he's detoxing. That's why he's thirsty. So it would be a good idea to get his glucose levels changed, checked, his hemoglobin A1C checked. Good idea to get a CBC, a complete metabolic panel, just to see, to make sure that his um, electrolytes are in balance and things like that. So get to your functional medicine doctor or your oncologist to get to, just to get some standard blood work done. It really should not have anything to do with supplements. I started all your recommendation supplements yesterday. I enjoyed the green drink. It had flavor. <clears throat> I really like the green drink too myself, um, especially when if you add some frozen berries and things to it. It's very, I think it's very tasty. Can I eat organic carbohydrates like Ezekiel bread? Uh, yes, um, no. So first of all, let me uh, um, put a little caveat in. This person, I don't have their file in front of me, so I don't know what they can and can't eat. So really, the rest of this question, can I eat carbohydrates, Kerrygold butter, tomatoes, kiwi, bison, wild-grown puff mushrooms from our neighbor's yard, and no pesticides? Well, yes, anybody can eat those. Uh, a cup of daily coffee? Yeah, pretty much anybody can have that. Wild-caught fish, depends on your diet that we have you on. 
Same with the bison. Kiwi, yes, you can eat that. Tomatoes, yes, you can eat that. Kerrygold butter, depends on if we took you off of dairy. Um, so wait until you get on your, if you haven't jumped on the Zoom call for the binder review. So I think those are on Monday, no, on Tuesdays. So if you haven't done that next Tuesday, you'll do your binder review. Um, yes, I think they're on Tuesdays. Look at the member site when those are. So that is, these are really questions for your binder review and, and Anne will go over that in detail with you. So, um, but you can look at your binder if you're supposed to be off of uh, dairy, then you really shouldn't be eating, you know, too much Kerrygold butter. Yeah, and understand when we take you off of something, it doesn't mean you have to be off of it like completely ever ever touch that thing again. It's it's within reason. So, um, can you eat some ham at at Easter or Christmas? Yes. Could you have some a little bit of butter um, uh, um, every few days, and I don't see any major problem with that. So uh, when I was in the throes of my cancer, I was uh, supposed to be off of dairy. Um, I just used a dairy substitute um, for everything. Um, but there was times that I cheated and had a little butter, Kerrygold butter, again, is my favorite too. Second part of this question at the bottom, I am starting the Rife machine tonight. Can I wear any of the life patches uh, life weight patches at night. Yes. And the last piece is I like Cheetos. <laughs> I love people like this. So honesty is the best way to deal with things, right? I like Cheetos too. Actually, I have to take that back. I actually haven't tasted Cheetos for about 25 years. But I'm going to tell you a little secret. If you like Cheetos, you should look at a product called Paleo Puffs. Paleo puffs paleo it doesn't have any dairy whatsoever um but they have a no cheese paleo puff that has an organic cheese like powder on them and they're really good so yes they might not be as flavorful as cheetos because cheetos is filled with msg and a whole bunch of garbage that you wouldn't want to feed your dog but it is once you get used to the paleo puffs, you're going to really like those if you like Cheetos. Question came in in the chat, referring back to a question back here. Uh, I have stomach cancer. Clarify that I can have white potatoes. Remember, I said twice baked. So if you're baking them, uh, cooking them all the way through, baking them, putting them in the fridge, and then baking them again. So there's twice baked potatoes. Um, is going to decrease the glycemic index. That means it breaks down to glucose much slower. And then you get the benefit of the carbohydrate, but you don't get the negative of the spike in glucose. I am experience, experiencing severe back pain. Advil does not help. Do you have anything that I can take for pain? Um, uh, no, um, not really. So from a natural, uh, perspective, um, it's, um, it's very difficult to compete for pain relief with drugs. Um, you just don't get the same benefit. So the first step you do for a natural perspective with mild pain is take typically anti-inflammatories, white willow bark um, can be used. That um, is where they initially got salicylic acid from, um, but certainly it's not gonna work the same as even taking aspirin, um, but that can be used to help with pain, but it's only gonna work with pretty mild pain. Um, high dose anti-inflammatories like curcumin, boswellia, um, um, EGCG from green tea extract, um, resveratrol, um, uh, stinging nettle, quercetin. Those are different flavonoids that can help with pain, but if you have very severe pain, it's really not going to touch it. If Advil isn't really helping, now Advil is more of an anti-inflammatory. Some people don't do well with Advil. They don't metabolize it. 
Personally, I can't take Advil. I get sick and vomit if I take Advil. And I'm afraid of what would happen to me if I took it now. Um, uh, so you might have to try some other over-the-counter and otherwise make sure you talk to your oncologist and see if you could get something stronger. If you, if, you know, long-standing pain can really drag, you know, you drag you down in a lot of different ways and you don't necessarily want to go down that pathway. So using a medication uh, sometimes is wise to block that pain pathway. It's, it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to be on a medication on a constant you know, basis. It's just sometimes just blocking that pathway can just break that pain cycle. So try some different things over the counter. Talk to your medical doctor that could possibly prescribe something as well. The only other thing that from a natural perspective that people have used for pain is marijuana. Um, now, I don't know what state this person is in and what the legalities are for the, that state, but if you are in a state where it's legal and you feel comfortable with it, we do. We have had patients that have used marijuana, either smoking it or using a gummy or some sort of chewable or dropper that has helped with pain. Um, that is another, that's really, that's probably the strongest natural pain relief is um, from marijuana. Um, so uh, think about that if that is available in your state. What are your thoughts on electric reclining chairs? Uh, uh, lazy boy chairs. I'm shopping for a recliner and while I know the electrical components run through the chair, the ease of use when you're, you aren't feeling well is appealing. And there are many more functions. However, I don't want to cause more harm than good. Um, do you think there's an EMF concern with the Hedron harmonizer on the chair be enough to protect me? Um, honestly, I don't think there's probably any EMF concern with the electric chairs, the motors, you know, aren't running constantly. They're only running when you use the, the chair itself. And it's simply a hydraulic lift. Um, I personally have an electric reclining chair, um, find it very comfortable and easy to use. <laughs> um, I have never tested the EMFs with my EMF meter simply because I, there's just no way it's putting out EMFs. I don't see any issues with them. I think they're great. They've really improved them. Um, they're great chairs, I would say, go for it. I have been running a fever almost every day, typically around 100 degrees for a few weeks. I, have, I did have an infection at the tumor site that caused 102 plus fever. But I believe that I have cleared that infection. Does the black sap process sometimes induce a fever? Maybe because of the immune response. Um, yes, that could be possible. Anything is possible. What you want to do with this is um, talk to your local GP about just running a uh, complete blood count, a CBC. Uh, and see if you have elevated white blood cells. Because if you do have an infection, you will have elevated white blood cells. If it's just an increase in uh, temperature because your body is um, creating an, uh, an increased immune response, you'll typically not have an increased white blood cell count. So that would be the thing that would be good to, or that I would run. Uh, and just admitting people here, jumping on. Um, so, but yes, I mean, when a person has a fever for a long period of time, there are some concerns. You don't want to have a long standing infection um, that you're not dealing with because that can drag your body down in different ways. Um, it typically just inflammation like chronic inflammation is not going to cause a fever. So now I have said over and over again that a fever isn't a bad thing. A fever is a good thing. It's it, that is what can cause the body to 
to knock a cancer into remission, actually. And I've told you stories of people that we've had in the past that got really sick with the flu, cancer patient, and actually having the flu and being really sick and having that high fever actually sent their cancer into remission because they had such a spike in their immune system. Not that we should go out and purposely be exposed to um, diseases, but that is a phenomenon that has been documented before. So um, that is the whole purpose of, of at least toxins that were given in, in years past as well. And new research that is done, um, they, I saw an episode of uh, our local news station, I think it was Mayo or Cleveland Clinic, they were doing studies about giving um, biotoxin mixes to patients in a novel approach that would cause a fever state and cause a person to go into remission with cancer. Of course, never went beyond the initial study because they can't make any money off of it, unfortunately. But Next question. I had a doctor appointment today to check baby since I am currently pregnant and newly diagnosed with breast cancer. They asked if I was taking a prenatal vitamin. I stated I am taking some supplements, but how do I explain who recommended them without mentioning your clinic? You could mention our clinic and you should certainly disclose what supplements you're taking to your doctor. Um, the, you know, I've said in videos in the past that um, you know, patients have, sometimes when they go to their oncologist, haven't fully disclosed everything that they're taking to their oncologist not because they're trying to deceive the oncologist or trying to, to not disclose something to them, but they just didn't want to get in an argument, let's say. Um, but you know, we always recommend that you fully disclose everything you're doing, um, but that you also don't necessarily need to defend everything you're doing at the same time. Uh, so, um, but for sure you want to fully disclose your supplements that you're taking and your doctor, remember, we're not treating you for your pregnancy. There may be certain things that you wanna take for pregnancy too. We have a very good um, organic whole food um, uh, supplement that is a prenatal supplement that we just started carrying. It's a great supplement. We used to carry orthomolecular prenatal and we switched to this one because it's a whole food. Uh, prenatal, um, and we private labeled it. I think it's just called our, our clear prenatal, I think, um, that will give you some nutrition that you're not on now. So think about that. If you're pregnant, you know somebody that's pregnant, uh, for other people that didn't ask this question, um, friends that are pregnant, you really want a good whole food prenatal. I, I just couldn't find one for years. Um, and um, so we carried the orthomolecular, and now we found uh, PHP that we private labeled their product. So you could look at our website for that. Uh, are there any cases when a person should not use SEACT? Um, well, sure. I mean, SEACT is an herbal tea. Technically, it's, you know, there's probably not any harm for most people. To, to be taking it, um, the, the, uh, but yeah, if you're taking too many things, you know, that's not necessarily good. If we didn't recommend it, but you feel like God's leading you to take SEAC, well then by all means, do what you feel like God's leading you to do. Um, are there contraindications to SEAC T? Uh, no, not that I know of. Um, maybe with pregnancy, that would be, I, I, but I don't know of any other things. I don't think there's any contraindications with any other meds with SEFT. Can you do a foot bath and a sauna on the same day? Uh, yes, I don't see any problem with that. And the thought behind this, I think, is are you pulling out too many minerals? No, I don't think that's an issue. I think you could do a foot bath and a sauna the same day. I don't see a problem with that at all. Okay, some questions that chatted in. Another provider has recommended six curcumin IVs to aid fighting pancreatic cancer. Any comments on that? Well, um, 
if you search, I mean, if you do a Google search on curcumin and cancer, you will literally find hundreds and hundreds of pages of articles. There's thousands of studies that have done and done on curcumin and cancer. So just because maybe we didn't put you on it or we didn't test you on it, I, I don't think you could I don't think you could do any harm with curcumin. There are some people that have um a sensitivity to curcumin. Curcumin is the active ingredient of turmeric. And some people can have a sensitivity to turmeric. It's pretty rare though. I mean, it's not that common. So I don't see any problem with that. If you feel like, again, that God's leading you to do that, you know, give it a try. Um, curcumin is, you know, one of my favorite nutrients. <laughs> it's something that I take on a regular basis. Um, and it's so I, I don't see that there's really any harm in trying that. Hippias chickpea puffs. Oh, yes, the chickpea puffs are good as well. Talk because we talked about those paleo puffs um, for the person who likes Cheetos. Um, that's another suggestion. The hippias I H I P P E A S. That's how you pronounce it. Chickpea, I think that's the brand name. Chickpea puffs are good. They're vegan, they're organic, and they have several flavors. I don't know that you guys can see the chat. Can you guys see the chat? Can you chat yes or no? If you can see the chat when we're doing this. Um, yes, you can. Okay, well, then you can see that. Next, I had a CBC panel done today because I'm feeling weak. My hemoglobin was down even lower, 8.3. So normally hemoglobin should be at around... 13 to 16, I think. I don't have all the normals memorized. And my red blood cell count was 2.7. That's pretty low. 8.3 is pretty low. Just finished up three iron infusions, hoping that would cure the anemia. What is going on and how can I resolve this? Good question. Um, I take redacted iron twice uh, per day normally, but did it while doing the iron infusions after discussing it with Anne. I'll go back to that. Um, but is that going to help? My primary care physician thinks it's not from low iron, but it's from the cancer. Um, so again, you know, if you Google search different types of anemia, you're going to find all sorts of different causes of anemia. The first thing that you should look at with the cause of anemia is there bleeding going on? Do you have blood, bloody stools? Do you have black stools because you're bleeding higher up and it's being digested and the iron is being digested and broken down and it's discoloring your stools to a dark color. Nope, don't have that. Um, is there bleeding anywhere else in your body? That's what we want to look for. So the number one cause of anemia is bleeding somewhere. Number two cause of anemia is, okay, you have a comorbidity of cancer with your anemia, you start looking at, is the cancer gobbling up the iron? And that's what your primary care doctor is thinking, that it's not just a normal low iron anemia, it's what's called, what we refer to many times on the Zoom calls as what it's called as an anemia of, of chronic disease, in this case, cancer. So uh, yes, that's possible that iron can be, uh, be gobbled up by the cancer itself. So what is the treatment then for that? Well, it's still to use iron because you're balancing out whether, you know, okay, well, if I feed my body iron, aren't I feeding the cancer? Well, in a, one sense, yes, but you can't, you know, get let your iron get so low. Um, you know, eating more beets, eating foods that, ha that will help build iron levels like that can be helpful, but um, you, I don't know exactly, you should talk to your primary care doctor. I don't know exactly what the iron infusions were, if they were IVs with just iron in them, or were they a blood fusion, like getting packed red blood cells? That's something different. So, um, if you get packed red blood cells, typically that's going to raise your hemoglobin up, uh, fairly quickly. If it's, uh, if it's um, just iron IVs, 
then maybe that's not going to be enough to raise that up. So again, talk to them about that. Um, that's not something we do in the office, so it's really hard to make too many in-depth comments. I don't want to make an ignorant comment about that. So, um, but certainly getting back on your supplemental iron, uh, at least for sure, that would be something I would consider. All right. Okay, thank you for that comment, Wendell. I can see the chat and the live version, but not the recorded. All right, good. Any other questions? Um, for those of you that um, have not had their genetic review yet, I know there are some people on here that are more in the relatively new stage of working with us. Remember the genetic review will be done um, through that Zoom call, um, and you can see that on the member site under genetic review. So we have a page on the members only site for genetics, and that's where the Zoom call is for that. Um, we do have a couple people on here that just started with us and haven't had their binder review yet. And so look at the binder section of the website of the members only site. And that's where the, you'll find the Zoom call registration for the binder review. Uh, so just a reminder for that. Any other questions? How far apart can I have an MRI and PET scan? I'm planning to have the both of these in September. Is it safe with the amount of radiation to have them close in days to each other? Um, yeah, I don't. I an MRI doesn't produce any radiation, so. An MRI is magnetic resonant imaging. There's zero radiation with an MRI. A PET scan is where you're going to have radiation. So you could actually have these things done on the same day if you want. So there's no issue there. Can you recommend a dosage of turmeric that won't lower blood pressure? Um, everybody's different. So some people do have a sensitivity to curcumin slash turmeric that does reduce blood pressure. Some people, like I said before, actually have um, IgG antibodies against turmeric and they end up with a sensitivity reaction. So antibodies to turmeric would be similar to having antibodies to gluten or gliadin, anti -gluten, gliadin peptides. And you eat them and you could feel sick, you could have inflammation in your body elsewhere. So um, you can test for that if you're concerned about that. There is, the best test for that is the Cyrex Array 10. It tests for uh, both IgG and IgM antibodies for about 300 different foods, and it does test for uh, turmeric. Um, some people have a genetic predisposition where the turmeric does lower their blood pressure, and that could be an advantage if they have high blood pressure. Um, some people can take turmeric for high blood pressure. It does nothing to them. So you're just going to play with the dosage and be checking your blood pressure and see what it does. I would suspect that if you took turmeric with food where you didn't get a spike in absorption, it would also help. So if you take liposomal turmeric, you're going to get a better absorption, just like if you take IV turmeric, you get instant absorption. But if you take something with the food, you'll get slower absorption. And that can be good in a way uh, sometimes as well. So uh, 
I would I would be kind of looking at that when you take your dosage and you're measuring your blood pressure, be take, using some sort of uh, diary to make note of of uh, um, what um, um, and what you're eating with it. Do you have a video or blog post on infrared sauna covering how long, how hot, et cetera? Um, I don't know that I do. I don't remember making one, but I might have. You'll have to search for it. Um, typically, though, um, I know I've answered this question in multiple Zoom calls, but um, like typical answer for that is you start out slow. So if you're, if the, um, if you just start new to sauna eating, I would say you start out slow and you go to tolerance. Um, personally, when I started doing a sauna and I haven't done one for a while, um, but this winter I'll start doing saunas again. And I'll probably only, now I'll probably only tolerate 15 minutes right away. But when I first started, I could tolerate about 10 minutes. And then I worked up to, I think I only got up to 25 minutes. So I just get, I just get the heebie-jeebies and I feel like I got to get out of there. So everybody's a little bit different and everybody's a little bit different how much they sweat. The whole purpose of the sauna is really to sweat. You're really not going to raise core body temperature very much with a sauna. You will get some and some benefit of that. But your the the main purpose in sauna eat is to is to bypass your liver for detox pathways. So you're helping sweat, and I do enough of that in the summer in my garden. So I don't feel like I need a sauna, but you're just taking some pressure off your liver and your kidneys. So you start out slow. And typical temperature is 140 degrees. What is a good protein powder for cancer patients to use? Well, we really only recommend the, um, the US enzymes slash master supplement um, protein powder. Um, it comes in a chocolate or a vanilla. And the reason is, it's the one protein powder that's not high in glutamine. So it's by US enzymes, it comes in a bag. It's US enzymes, I've said this before, out of all the supplement companies that we carry, they are the most anal impurity. They're like crazy anal purity. So um, they have a very good clean product. Um, and that's really the only one that we sell um, is that one. I think we might carry a Designs for Health one. I think they actually source their enzymes from US enzymes anyhow. So I would like to try sunflower seed powder or watermelon seed powder from Sprout Libby. Not familiar with those, um, so I really can't comment on that. I'm not familiar with those. To avoid glutamates, I know we have to avoid bone broth. By the same logic, should we avoid any meats cooked for a long time, like crock pot meals? Well, you're going to, it's not that you're going to not get glutamine in your diet. It's not, the purpose isn't to, to not get any glutamine in your diet. So understand glutamine and glutamate are not the same thing, though glutamine does convert to glutamate and vice versa. And it's dependent upon a specific gene. However, that does happen even if you have the gene defects. Matter of fact, if you have the gene defects, you can convert glutamine to glutamates quicker. And I know it gets a little technical, but they function differently. So glutamine is an amino acid. So an amino acid is used by your body to build proteins. Also, enzymes are proteins, but they actually function to cut apart proteins like a scissors. So enzymes are built from amino acids too. Your body uses amino acids to build so many things. You need amino acids. Therefore, you need protein. What is protein? Well, protein is a long chain amino acid. So like meat, you eat a piece of chicken, 
It's a long chain amino acid. When you start breaking it down by chewing it, that's the process of initial digestion, goes into your mouth and you secrete an enzyme called ptalin from your parotid glands that then help break down some carbohydrates and help break down some of the proteins. Proteins, as they break down, so they're long chains of amino acids. Think of like a pearl necklace. And enzymes help break that down. Um, think of that breakdown is using a scissors, cutting that pearl necklace up into from a necklace of 400 beads now to a necklace of 15 and 30 and 25 and 20 and 17. Those are now called peptides. So peptides are chains of amino acids that came from a longer chain protein. And then you break those down into finally just two beads or one bead. One bead is an amino acid. So amino acids are one bead of a protein or one bead of a peptide. Your body is only supposed to absorb either an amino acid or a dipeptide, meaning two beads together, two amino acids tied together. Um, and anything larger than that, you shouldn't even be absorbing. And the problem is we have damaged gut walls and we absorb these larger peptides and then that our body can make antibodies against and we have all this immune issues. And this is what has caused major autoimmune problems. And um, it takes a lot of our energy from our immune system to deal with these things. And that can be a contributor to cancer. Now, glutamates actually function as a... Um, neurotransmitter in different parts of our body. Most commonly, we talk about glutamates in your brain. They're an excitatory neurotransmitter in your brain. Well, that could cause all sorts of things from anxiety to OCD. Um, certainly anxiety and OCD, the most common things you think of at ADD, ADHD, all are high glutamate issues. So people with those conditions typically have a gene SNP defect, not always. Maybe they just eat a lot of glutamates. That's the bad thing about monosodium glutamate, MSG in foods. Why does monosodium glutamate do? It's a glutamate that goes right to your brain because it's a glutamate, acts as a neurotransmitter, fires your brain. It, gets, it excites different um, neurons in your brain. It actually makes you crave that food more. That's why they put monosodium glutamate in food because it fires the glutamate receptors in your brain. It makes you crave that food and you think, oh, these Cheetos are just great. I just love these Cheetos. You eat more Cheetos. It sells more food. That's why they do it. But it's very damaging to our brains, very damaging. So glutamates are not good for us because it causes our neurons to literally burn out and can be a contributor to both brain cancers and to um, uh, neurodegenerative diseases. So we should be staying away from MSGs, foods containing MSGs, which are very uh, you know, high amount of the processed foods these days and a lot of the foods that you can buy in restaurants. Now, glutamine, just from a good organic chicken, will break down to glutamate as well. Now, don't get me wrong. We need glutamate. You need excitatory neurotransmitters. You need to have that. We just don't need excess ones. So it's a matter of having a balance. So if you're not, if your cancer isn't, isn't driven by glutamine and we've taken you off of meat, then no, you could have meat. And I would say, no, don't worry about cooking it, you know, in a crock pot. I gave you a 15 minute answer on a question that all I needed to say is, no, don't worry about cooking in the crock pot. Sorry, I have a habit of doing that. But, um, but glutamates are different. And yes, if we're, if we're just constantly eating meat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we're just constant humongous carnivores. We can have excess glutamates from that. Um, so we could have an hour long discussion, obviously, on glutamate, glutamates in the brain and what glutamates do as a neurotransmitter. And 
and then what glutamates can do to brain cancers and what glutamine can do to feed cancer because glutamine is um, uh, very um, uh, necessary for growth. So, um, but no long answer for, for really what you wanted. Short answer, I wouldn't worry about using crock pots uh, for cooking meat. Uh, that's not what we're concerned about. That's not gonna increase the amount of glutamine in the food. Um, that's not going to increase the amount of glutamates exposure. Whether you ate that meat that you just cooked on the stove for 10 minutes or whether you ate it in a crock pot, if you're not increasing the amount of glutamates in the food. Well, I didn't need to say all that stuff, sorry. Don't you carry a uh, buggy spray anymore? Um, I don't see it in your store. You see the do-it-yourself kit. Call the clinic. We do have some made. Yes, we do. Um, I don't know how many bottles we have made. Um, I will tell you, if you haven't used that, it really works. Um, it's, it's, you can make your own with essential oils. That's what it's using. Um, it really works well. So um, call, call the clinic and ask. Um, we, um, I know we have it. I don't know why we wouldn't see it on the site. I don't know. Thank you. Appreciate it. I was not clear about that. Hopefully I cleared it up. I didn't just muddy the water. Apologize. Okay. Is bead very thirsty a result of taking Benagene? Uh, no. I don't think so. So Benagene is an oxaloacetate, which helps reduce glutamine in the brain um, tremendously. So I don't think that it would have any effect on thirst whatsoever, um, nor detoxification. Again, you may have asked that question earlier, maybe you weren't on yet. This one, my son just started his protocol and he has been so thirsty. Um, I, I, and my answer to that was, um, make, go, make sure you go get a complete blood count, glucose level and CBC to make sure his electrolytes aren't out of balance for some reason, um, <laughs> um, or his glucose level is spiking or something like that. I would go get that checked. Uh, but I, I don't think it, uh, I, you know, anything can happen. Uh, and I've never heard of Benagene causing thirst. And um, certainly if he has this, you know, big dietary change, his glucose can be bouncing up and down. That can cause thirst. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I would, I would get, if it was me, I would, if you're like, well, this is crazy. He's just like super thirsty. Um, I would make sure you get a CBC and a complete uh, a complete blood count, which is the CBC and a metabolic panel, um, and just and see if they can run some electrolyte panel just to make sure. You can also get a finger prick um, glucose uh, glucometer at Target and test your own glucose to make sure that isn't spiking as well. You have comor anybody can have comorbidities that. You didn't know maybe you were, he was very pre-diabetic before all this. I don't know the history in detail, so you, I would get that checked. Um, that's one of the things to think of with severe thirst. You think of early diabetes, um, blood sugar handling problems. Um, simple to check, though it's not complete. It's better to get a hemoglobin A1C, but to get a uh, just a blood glucose level would be helpful. Any other questions? You bet. So just remember if this recording works, sometimes the Zoom recordings don't work and it doesn't end up recording. 
gets lost with the abyss. And if this works, um, we get it uploaded to YouTube, and it usually is on in the members site within about 10, 15 minutes. So after we say goodbye, I do that. Um, so hopefully if you missed a question that you had sent in that uh, I addressed a little bit earlier, you'll be able to listen to that. Okay, so I think um, we will say goodbye. If there's no other questions, we'll get this uploaded. All right, thank you guys. I'll be praying for you. Um, and uh, um, keep praying for us. I appreciate it. We cherish your prayers. All right, bye-bye.